Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back. Before the season ends, I want to talk about the trials of Osiris Sniper Rifle, Eye of Soul. I don't take account, so it's taken me a lot of time to gather the rolls. With RNG, with how it's even obtained, it's really hard to get, so I'm really glad they're changing the current system of needing three wins to even spend your tokens. I believe more players should be able to obtain it. And this week at Bungie, they said that there's going to be a weekly trials bounty that unlocks Ingrams, and the bounty reward's going to match the win three milestone for that week. It's a really good thing. I don't see too many players talking about Eye of Soul. That's a real shame because it's a great sniper. It has a lot of the things that you want. It's important to bring up that Bungie said community feedback that Revoker, Beloved, they have been dominating and they're looking at the analytics. They account for 86% of the sniper rifles used in the Crucible. Then they say if they include other low zoom sniper rifles, the number gets even higher. They say that they're specifically looking at how low zoom translates to ease of use for sniper rifles. We're investigating changes that make choosing a sniper rifle zoom more of an interesting choice. So here we are. Eye of Soul has a 45 zoom. Now this falls in that category of making a sniper rifle zoom more interesting, or a more interesting choice. I don't know what they're thinking of doing, but it sounds like a buff to me. Not even talking about perks. In the feel of Eye of Soul, this is something that's external that looks to be happening to it. So don't forget about Eye of Soul, we're going to talk about it in this review. The popular snipers are on the lower zoom side, like they said, 86%, 35 zoom for Revoker, Twilight Oath, 40 for Beloved, Soul Survivor, Omniscient Eye, Supremacy, 43 for Bite of the Fox, Neroma, 45, we have Eye of Soul, Tranquility, Izanagi, 50, Tatara Gaze, and then 53, like the Show of Force. Of course, there are many others not mentioned, but the 45 zoom is pretty much right there in the middle, and a lot of players are using Izanagi in PvE, it really isn't that bad of a zoom level. I don't mind it. Compared to a 35 in the Crucible, especially with how maps are kind of catered to shorter range, you can see where the 35 zoom really excels. In reality, in the Crucible, it's in the kinetic spot. Revoker has more going for it. High impact, meaning it can down a super. Reversal of fortune, meaning that if you miss a shot, the ammo comes back. It's got low zoom, giving the player that ease of use. But the sniper will be sunset. Ones like Beloved will as well. That's going to leave the door open for new snipers to get some use. Some saying Supremacy, some saying Omniscient Eye. But let's not forget, new snipers are going to be coming out as well. And in fact, the new meta probably is going to have a lot of the new weapons we haven't seen yet. That's going to be coming a part of new content, but don't forget about Eye of Soul. Eye of Soul came out in Season 10, Season 11 is next week, so it's really new, meaning it has a little bit more longevity with Sunset. It's going to be able to use a little bit longer than most, and it has those upcoming changes in Season 12 on how that 45 zoom stat works. But to show how good it is on a base level here, on the screen, the number right next to it is Beloved. And remember, Beloved has very strong stats. Eye of Soul has a range of 55, stability of 54, reload of 46, handling of 51, and aim assist stat of 68. So the bones, like the core of the weapon, strikingly similar to Beloved, but it has that 45 zoom. That keeps a lot of players away, and that's something I hope that Bungie can help. And then, of course, Beloved is currently too good to really put down, especially in something like Trials. I'm also going to do something a little bit different here, and I'm thinking about doing it for upcoming reviews. Just let me know what you think. There are the base stats, but with perks added, with the masterwork added, there is a stat max that can be obtained the highest that it can go. So we have all these base stat numbers. I'm going to take away the beloved ones. The number next to them now is the highest that they can go with the perk pull given. That's counting the barrel, the magazine, and the masterwork. So it can have a max range of 86, max stability of 86, reload of 68, and a max handling at 74. For the barrels, some ones to pay attention to, Arrowhead Break is going to get that recoil stat to 100, making your follow-up shots a little bit easier, and it also gives plus 9 to handling. We have Fluted Barrel, this is your handling barrel, plus 14 to handling. It's very important for certain rolls. We have Small Bore, plus 7 to range and stability, has no negatives to it. For the magazine, Tactical Mag is nice, plus 5 to stability, plus 10 to reload, and it also adds another round to the magazine. Accurized, pure range for plus 9. Alloy Mag, greater reload when the magazine is empty. Decent perk for players that are really aggressive. Moving on to the first node, we have Hipfire Grip. The changes coming to this perk do not affect sniper rifles. I would personally stay away. We have Field Prep. This is a really good PvE option for this sniper. Increased ammo reserves, faster ready, stow, and reload when crouched. Now the reload stat is changed to plus 50. So in Season 11 with this perk, the reload stat will be at 96. It can get to a 100 with a masterwork. You can throw on, of course, Reloader on your gauntlets. But Field Prep is going to have a total of a 96 stat for your reload. We have Firmly Planted, Elite Perk increases accuracy, stability, and handling while crouched. 
This also works when you're knee sliding. And since it grants accuracy, it is worth using. But if you do that, it is really complemented by handling exotics, meaning your Dragon Shadows, the Ophidian Gloves. And it's also encouraged to put on sniper rifle targeting on your helmet for a better aim down sight speed, better accuracy, and target acquisition. We have Outlaw. I honestly would go field prep because Outlaw is also going to give plus 50 to the reload stat. And the reload scale's at 0.8, so they're, they're the same. Field prep is basically Outlaw on demand. You would go field prep now. Then finally, we have Snapshot. This is going to be what most PvP players are going to be going for. Faster aim down sights. Always a great perk. Moving on to the second node, we have Vorpal Weapon. Increased damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians with their super active. Now, this is a main draw for me personally. This adaptive frame was nerfed to not be able to one-shot supers. Vorpal allows you to headshot supers. It's the only adaptive to currently have this perk. Celerity, elite perk, but situational. I have a card at the top of the screen and it's down below in the description and it goes in depth as to what Celerity does, all the benefits that it gives. At the heart, this is a trial sniper if you do this perk. And if you decide to go this route with this perk, it's more so for Sherpa players helping others because you might find yourself last alive. This can come in clutch with all the bonuses that it gives, especially to flinch. Really good in that aspect. We have Box Breathing. I would give this more weight if Vorpal wasn't there. For PvE, DPS is not going to be there over Vorpal. Only like in a single shot pop out scenario. In the Crucible, it can be used as a super shutdown, but you need to be aiming down sights for a little bit before Box is active. This is going to be the alternative to one shot a super if you don't have Vorpal with this frame. Then Opening Shot, Elite Perk, better accuracy range on the opening shot of attack. Accuracy, the keyword there, always been great in Destiny 2. For perk combinations, tough parts actually getting the sniper, then getting a good roll for it. A lot of the time, you just kind of deal with what you have. All the gameplay you've been seeing for this review is with Snapshot Vorpal. It has my top two barrels, Corkscrew for handling, Arrowhead for 100 direction on the recoil stat. It's got a reload masterwork and tactical mag. This gives me everything that I need. It's got snapshot, faster aimed on sights. I can take out supers. It's really that simple for me. I find a ton of value in this. I'm not worrying about a follow-up shot, or if I can clutch a drag scope, I know that I'm going to take them out. Like, this is a very special combo because it's on an adaptive frame. Other perk combinations, Snapshot Celerity for Trials. You can bring this one out for non-super rounds, and then the Vorpal one or another sniper when the super rounds come up. It's, like I said, it's really good for Sherpas. Snapshot Box is an alternative if you don't get Vorpal. And then Snapshot Opening Shot. It's just an elite combo. For overall use, you can't go wrong with it. It's very, very good. Now, the second one is taking out Snapshot and putting in Firmly Planted. Now, if you do, like, Firmly Planted with Opening Shot, you're doubling up on that accuracy. It leads to a very clean-feeling sniper. For this one, handling masterwork and corkscrew on the barrel to get that handling stat up that's really what you want to max out that handling stat then you put targeting on the helmet dexterity on the boots then your exotics for handling very good combination firmly planted in opening shot and firmly planted can work with anything else as well with vorpal with celerity it's going to be up to the player even though at the heart it is a PvP sniper, it also has a really good PvE role, and that's going to be Field Prep and Vorpal. Good for damage, it's Outlaw on demand, it's really good for solo players, or in certain activities where you can't really depend on something like Firing Line to proc. That's where Vorpal can show up. Again, the hardest part currently is just obtaining it. Now they're fixing this, but then you need it to roll the way that you want it to. There's some very good perk combinations, and I wanted to make this video to show just how close it is to Beloved, and in a lot of ways it outshines Beloved, but there's that one thing a lot of players don't like. It's that 45 zoom, and with this video I wanted to remind players, remind you, that they are looking into this, personally have no idea what they could possibly do to make it more appealing to use a 45 zoom scope. I'm really interested in hearing on what you guys think that they could change. To me, it does sound like a buff when it happens. I've been really enjoying Eye of Soul. I think it's great, and I believe more players would be using it if Revoker wasn't in the game. That's how good I believe that it really is. 45 zoom or not, it has great stats, it has great perks. As the game moves on, weapons will be phased out, especially in higher tier play, and Eye of Soul is a fresh weapon from this season. It hasn't really been used and has a longer way to go before it gets sunset. Don't forget about Eye of Soul, it's very good. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Ring the bell to get videos right when they go live. I am partnered with Scuff, so if you're looking for a new controller, use my link down below and use code COOL at checkout for a discount. I would like to know what you think of Eye of Soul, and if you like it, tell us why. If not, what's the reasoning? Is it the zoom? Did it just not feel good? Is that you feel there's no need because Revoker's in that kinetic spot? What do you not like about it? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.